Can you guess who I am? Shall I give you a clue? Now, can you guess who these are? Yes, they are the cells responsible for sexual reproduction in humans. Welcome to BioWorld. This is our topic for today. The syllabus will include the process of spermatogenesis and the process of oogenesis. So let's start off with spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis occurs in the testes of a male. The testis is protected in a layer of skin called the scrotum, which is located outside the body of the human male. It is positioned outside the body because spermatogenesis requires a temperature that is slightly lower than the human body temperature. Now let's have a look inside the scrotum. Here is the testis and on top of the testis we have a structure called the epididymis. The epididymis then narrows into a tube called the bus deferens. Okay, now let's look inside the testis. The testis is made up of many tiny tubes called the seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules will all join together at the epididymis and from there they are channeled into the bus deferens. So now, let's move on to the seminiferous tubule. Let us isolate one of the seminiferous tubules and have a look at the cross section. You find that the wall of the seminiferous tubule is lined by many layers of cells, which end with something that looks fibrous at the center here, which are actually the sperm cells. Once the sperm cells are produced, by these circular cells through the process of spermatogenesis, the sperms then will swim through this hollow space to connect at the epididymis, after which they will swim out through the vas deferens out of the body of the male. Now, the cross section of a seminiferous tubule, when seen under a microscope, will appear like this where you have the outer layer of the seminiferous tubule. Then here you have the layers of cells that carry out spermatogenesis. And in the center hollow space, you will have the sperms that have been produced by spermatogenesis. Let me show you in diagram form. In this drawing of the cross section of the seminiferous tubule, you can see the first layer is what we call as the basement membrane. The basement membrane is made up of fibrous proteins and it supports two types of cells. If you look at this diagram carefully, you should be able to identify two types of cells. The first type are the elongated cells called the Sertoli cells. And the second type are the rounder cells called spermatogonium. Now during spermatogenesis, what happens is the spermatogonium will start to grow. Once it has reached its maximum size, we call it a primary spermatocyte. It will now be ready to carry out meiosis, starting first with meiosis 1. When primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 1, they form two secondary spermatocytes. We find that the number of chromosomes in the primary spermatocyte will be halved in the secondary spermatocyte. So, primary spermatocytes are diploid, whereas the secondary spermatocytes are haploid. The secondary spermatocytes then will carry out meiosis 2 to produce four spermatids. The number of chromosomes are the same as the number of chromosomes in the secondary spermatocyte. So, the secondary spermatocyte is haploid, the spermatid is also haploid. Spermatid then will experience differentiation, whereby there will be a change in its structure 
where it will start to develop flagella. Once it has taken this shape, it is called the spermatozoa or in short, we call it the sperm. Now, these sperms require a lot of glucose to generate ATP to enable them to swim. So, these cells will obtain their glucose from the Sertoli cells. So, this whole process that has just been explained is spermatogenesis. The process takes 74 days to complete and occurs in the male from the moment of puberty that is about 15 years old till the death of the male. So that completes the story of spermatogenesis. Now let's move on to the story of oogenesis. Oogenesis occurs in the ovary of a female. Let's have a look at the reproductive system of the female. This ovum is synthesized in the ovary through oogenesis and then it will travel along the oviduct, also known as the fallopian tube, into the uterus. Let's have a closer look at the ovary. Now, if we view the cross-section of the ovary under a microscope, this is what we would be able to see where you can see there are many circular structures called follicles. To explain about these follicles, let me use a diagram of the ovary. Production of ovum by the ovary is known as oogenesis, and the changes that happen to the ovary during oogenesis is known as the ovarian cycle. Now, oogenesis in the female occurs when she is already a fetus in her mother's womb. The ovary of the female fetus will contain cells called oogonium, which will grow into primary oocytes. So, when a baby girl is born, her ovary will contain a fixed number of primary oocytes. Now you can see in this picture here that the primary oocyte is surrounded by smaller cells. The smaller cells are called follicle cells. So a primary oocyte that is surrounded by follicle cells is called a primary follicle. Now as the little girl grows up, the primary oocyte will remain dormant or inactive until she reaches puberty. Once she reaches puberty, the primary oocyte will do meiosis 1 to become a secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte is still surrounded by follicular cells, so it is also known as the secondary follicle. The secondary follicle then begins to expand and grow, becoming what is known as a graphene follicle. Inside the graphene follicle, the secondary oocyte is still present. Once the graphene follicle has reached its maximum size, the graphene follicle will rupture, releasing the secondary oocyte into the fallopian tube. The leftover parts of the graphene follicle will shrink to form what is called the corpus luteum. After some time, the corpus luteum shrinks further and becomes a corpus albicans. Now the stages from secondary oocyte right up to corpus albicans is repeated every 28 days from the moment of puberty to menopause. However, this is not the complete story of oogenesis because in females, oogenesis is divided into three stages. The first stage is during uh, fetal development. The second stage is during puberty or menstrual cycle. 
And the final stage is during pregnancy. To complete the explanation on oogenesis, I will have to cover discussion on pregnancy. But before I can discuss pregnancy, I would like to explain the role of hormones in the female menstrual cycle, which will be my discussion in the next video. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.